Welcome to NC3T's Brown Bag Webinar Series. This is Kathy Schick from the National Center for College and Career Transitions, and I will be facilitating today's session. NC3T is a mission-driven organization focused on helping states, school districts, post-secondary education, and workforce partners develop college and career pathway systems. We provide technical assistance, coaching, and consulting services. NC3T offers several publications, as you can see on the screen, and coming soon, we have The Power and Promise of Pathways by Hans Meter. You can visit nc3t.com to purchase any of these books. To assist our clients in developing effective and sustainable pathway systems, NC3T has designed the Pathway System Framework, which includes, as you'll see on this slide, five broad components. Programs of study, highlighted here, is the focus of today's session, and to drill down even deeper, we're focusing on one particular program of study, and that is health sciences. We have two programs of study to share today. The first will be shared by Donna Pavlovic and, and Kristen Applegate. They're both emerging health instructors at Lehigh Career and Technical Institute, or LCTI, in the Allentown, Pennsylvania area. Donna has been an instructor at LCTI for over 15 years. She received her RN diploma and a bachelor's degree in nursing from Pennsylvania colleges. After working in the hospital setting for 15 years, she accepted a position at Air Products as an occupational health nurse before settling into her, career, her current role as a health science educator. While teaching at LCTI, Donna completed both a master's degree in education from Temple University and a master's of science degree in nursing from Cedar Crest College. Donna is also currently employed as an adjunct professor for the practical nursing program at Penn State University and teaches for the RN and DSN program at the Pennsylvania College of Health and Sciences in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Her partner in crime is Kristen Applegate, who is also an emerging healthcare professional instructor at Lehigh Career and Technical Institute. And like Donna, Kristen is also an adjunct professor at Penn State Lehigh Valley campus. Kristen received her diploma in nursing from Mercer Medical Center's School of Nursing. And while working in the intensive care unit, she received her bachelor degree in nursing from Hahnemann University and Medical College of Pennsylvania. After working in the hospital industry for 11 years, Kristen ventured into case management and the outpatient setting for a few years before settling into her current role of teaching. While in the outpatient setting, she received her certificate for exercise specialist through the American College of Sports Medicine. She has been teaching at LCTI for the past nine years, and during this time, she received her master's degree in career and technical education and was honored with receiving the Teacher Education Graduate in CTE Award from Temple University. Donna and Kristen will discuss LCTI's Emerging Health Program for about 15 minutes, and they have invited you to type your questions into the box and have given me permission to interrupt them with questions as they talk. And in full disclosure, I just want to point out that I have worked with Donna and Kristen, and have actually, uh, I used to work at LCTI, and have actually helped interview prospective students for this program. And uh, these ladies are incredibly wonderful. Both of my own children have very good friends who are in their program and after, even after they graduate still want to know how these two are doing. They're two former teachers. So welcome Donna and Kristen. So glad to have you with us. I'm going to go mute now so you can present your wonderful program. Thank you Kathy for that great introduction. Kristen and I are really excited to share some of the components of our program with all the listeners today. And to give you a little background, if you want to go to the next slide, um, the Emerging Health Professionals Program was a collaboration initially between Penn State University and the Lehigh Valley. Lehigh Valley Health Network, which is a, a huge hospital system in our area, and Lehigh Career and Technical Institute. The partners got together, actually it took a couple years of meetings and reviewing some of the objectives and goals for the program. And finally, in 2005, the first class had entered the program, um, which consisted of 13 students. So it's a community outreach type of program, um, specifically dual enrollment um, from the Penn State side, so it allowed seniors to take college-level courses while they still remained in high school. 
Another objective of the program was that it was able to offer interactive university level classroom experience. The professors didn't come to us on our high school campuses. The students actually went to the college and sat in and they were part of a regular college class. Another component of the program that actually seems pretty popular with the students is that it allows them the opportunity to explore careers in the healthcare setting through our various partners. And Kristen's going to be addressing that a little bit later on. And finally, this, the whole um, piece of the program helps students to make those real world connections with what they're learning in the classroom to what they're seeing out in the community as they're shadowing the various health careers. So if you want to, yeah, next slide. So as I said before, the first class uh, was started in 2005. It consisted only of 13 students. Um, they were all female. And at the time, we actually titled the program Allied Health. But we realized um, as we were, we seemed to be getting more people interested just in nursing. And we didn't want this to be just about nursing. We wanted it to encompass all the disciplines in healthcare. So we actually changed the name after that first year and it is now currently the Emerging Health Professionals Program. This past June, our 10th cohort of students did graduate in the spring of 2015, and I am happy to also say our first physician at the same time graduated from medical school in May. So he was able to come and speak to our graduating class of 2015, talk about his journey and what it meant for him to be a part of this program, how it opened doors for him. And he is now out in LA doing his internship and residency in critical care. So as of today, I had to go through mentally and count how many students have gone through the program. And we're going to estimate, this is a rough estimate, about 450 students have gone through this program in the 11 years of its existence. Next slide, please. You can see on the slide some of our program partners. Initially, again, there was three partners, Penn State, Lehigh Valley, Lehigh Valley Health Network, and of course, LCTI. And then what started to happen after that first year, word of mouth, students were really excited. They were hearing about what their friends were doing. Um, so through word of mouth, the recruitment was almost automatic that we just had students applying, even though we also went out to the schools and recruited at the junior level. Um, so as our enrollment increased, we realized we needed more resources. Uh, so we asked St. Luke's University Health Network to get on board, Good Shepherd Rehabilitation Hospital, Country Meadows of Allentown, and also Lehigh Carbon Community College to offer more resources so we could accommodate a higher number of students. So next slide. So some of the curriculum that um, drives us, basically, we are a program of study. Uh, our students do take the NOPTI test at the end of the year for health assisting. So we try to focus some of our areas to prepare them for that, um, which includes the list you can see before you. Um, health careers, obviously, that was one of the main objectives of the program, was to have students be able to witness all the different health careers that they don't see on TV when they're watching Grey's Anatomy and ER and all those other um, high drama um, programs. We cover medical terminology. The students have to be certified in HIPAA before they're allowed to shadow in the hospital setting. Uh, infection control, vital signs, medical, legal, cultural diversity. Uh, we focus a lot on communication skills because as the students find out, as they're shadowing, they do get to observe how the interdisciplinary team communicates with each other, which eventually affects patient outcomes. We cover disease process, which also kind of overlaps with their anatomy and physiology courses that they're taking at the college level. Um, by the end of this semester, all the students will be getting some stress management after they take their final exams, because they are feeling that stress at this moment. And then we offer some certifications um, through the, the different disciplines. Uh, they're all certified in American Heart, CPR, and First Aid. We also do a direct care worker certification through the Department of Welfare. And this year we added a patient safety certification, which was recommended by our Occupational Advisory Committee members. Next slide, please. So I mentioned NOCTI. Um, one of our goals, uh, it, it's, it can be a challenge because we just meet these students in September and we prepare them by March and April to take their NOCTI exam in the health assistant area. And I can say that, I, I'm not going to brag, but our students usually do very well. They're very well prepared. 
and we have them always passing at the advanced level. Next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the college component of the program, and then Kristen's going to talk about our partners and how they um, shadow and take tours and things like that. So initially, again, Penn State was the um, university that was on board through their um, community outreach division. They were on board to help the students, um, and they were offered courses initially in chemistry and physiology. And after a couple years, uh, we were starting to get feedback from students that those courses weren't transferring together. And a lot of colleges wanted either Chem 1 and Chem 2, or they wanted AMP 1 and AMP 2. So we finally switched over, and the students now will take coursework in anatomy and physiology. Next slide. So this is just some um, photos of what the students are doing in the classroom. The Lehigh Carbon Community College partnership was started three years ago when we realized that there was some difficulty in getting funding to cover the tuition cost for the Penn State coursework. So we added L-TRI-C as an alternative for students who didn't have the financial resources to pay for the tuition. So Lehigh Carbon's program offers AMP1 in the fall and then AMP2 in the spring. When they finish, they will graduate with eight credits of both those courses. Next slide. And on the Penn State side of things, this is uh, Penn State University, which recently in the last five years moved to a really nice um, area, which is down in our lower end of our county in uh, Center Valley. They offer anatomy as a separate course in the fall, and then they will take physiology in the spring. And again, it's eight college credits so that when they graduate from high school, they also have those credits that will follow them to whatever colleges they will be going to. And we have to um, um, also mention that there are times when some of the colleges would still prefer that the student takes their own AMP, so the credits will still transfer, but they will transfer as electives instead of as a science in their science major. So now I'm going to hand it over to Kristen, and she's going to talk about the hospital side of things. Thanks, Donna. Shadowing is a big component of our program. As we have grown our program, so has the opportunity to gain more sites. Um, Donna mentioned we now have four uh, partners that allow our students to come and observe in different units. Uh, we utilize Lehigh Valley Health Network, which allows students to shadow at three of their locations. Rotations for LVHN include the operating room, labor and delivery, neonatal intensive care unit, pediatric intensive care unit, the burn unit, inpatient pediatrics, pathology, interventional radiology, oncology, and trauma, just to name a few. St. Luke's University Health Network in Allentown allows students to rotate through uh, different departments, such as labor delivery, infusion center, radiology, and the emergency room. And what's nice is the students get to compare um, the smaller hospital of St. Luke's to the very large hospital of Lehigh Valley. Next slide, please. Country Meadows um, is one of our unique opportunities to le learn more about the assisted living and the long-term care setting. Students are provided a tour through the different entities and develop communication skills during their interview of a resident. Also during this rotation, students earn their certificate for a direct care worker, as Donna mentioned before. Um, lastly, our Good Shepherd um, provides an opportunity for the students to learn more about the rehab services side of healthcare. They provide opportunities for our students in outpatient as well as their in-hospital setting. Some examples are speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, hand clinic, neuro clinic, and pediatric clinic. Next. Um, just explaining how our process, we have 50-some students that are involved in our program this year, so there's three classes total. We divide each of our classes into groups, um, and then there's four groups per class that rotate through our different areas of shadowing. Each session is five to six weeks long. We try and take a, a, a poll of when they first come in, what are their true interests are, so we can try to attempt to see a physician assistant if that's what they're really leaning towards, or maybe someone just wants an overall view of the different um, availabilities. 
Um, I just wanted a quick talk about weekly responsibilities for Donna and I that involve the shadowing, because it's very um, busy work, as, as we, we say. Weekly responsibilities, we are constantly emailing um, the different mentors and all the different partners to make sure that they can still accommodate our students, um, to let them know which student is coming, what time, et cetera. Um, we have to create student sheets so they know where they're going. Um, and then we also divide our time that we meet certain groups um, at one location, then we'll drive to the next location, et cetera, so we can try to see everyone in the different facilities. Um, next slide, please. One of the areas that we're able to go into um, that's unique with this program, uh, the Surgical Education Center at Lehigh Valley Health Network. This was created back in 2010, and the director um, at that time became involved with our program. He allows the students to rotate through this department, and they get to learn what the surgical residents go through during their clinical time in residency. And you can see in some of the pictures there, they actually go through the different uh, stations that are set up for the residents to go through, where they can learn their hand-eye coordination, um, et cetera. Um, hospital experiences that we have every Friday, we are at one of the hospital sites. Um, this allows us to get different shadowing ideas. Can you change the slide, please? Um, that maybe we can't get them to, in to see, such as a forensic pathologist or a coroner, but allows them to come to us and talk about their career and what they do for a living. Um, next slide. We arrange tours throughout the school year. The example shown here is the Citronia, which is a, a local ambulance corps, um, where they actually took us in. We got to see the back of an ambulance, all the equipment that was in it, and they actually created stations that the students could rotate through. They learned how to start IVs, intubate, uh, learn, hook up an EKG, read it, et cetera. Uh, we have uh, many different tours that we go through, but Centroni is one of them, the sterile processing department, and also tele-intensivist is another one. Next. And lastly, I just want to talk about our goals. Um, we have each student gain an understanding of the different roles or careers that are available in healthcare. Um, we also want them to determine, is healthcare really for them? Instead of going through college and spending four to six years and then find out it's not for them, they can't stand the sight of blood, they learn it now, and we can and move them on maybe to something different, but still in the healthcare arena. And lastly, we allow the opportunity to develop college readiness skills for them to be successful as they continue on in their journey. That's it, I guess, do we have any questions? Sorry, I was unmuting myself. Um, no, I think we probably will. That was a lot of, it, of great information, and I know these are very short amount of times. So, oh, we do have one question. How many hours a day do you have the students? How many days a week are they shadowing? Thank you, Teresa. They are with us either in the morning session or the afternoon session, so they're with us three hours a day, every day, five days a week. And what is the SIP code for the program? Five one uh, Say that one more time. Five one uh, period zero nine nine nine. Great, thank you. Um, if oh, now there's another one. That, I'm telling you, ladies, these questions were not here while you were talking, or I would have interrupted you. One more: Is the NOPTI exam recognized by employers? Oh, this is a, a kind of a good loaded question. Is the NOPTI exam um, recognized by employers at an, as a needed certificate? What we usually suggest to the students, and this is how we get them to buy in, is that it's a way that you can go into an entry-level position. Even though these students are high flyers and going to college, we encourage them to go to local hospitals to get those part-time jobs, such as being a technical partner, a patient care assistant, or even a transport person. And by having that certificate that they will receive if they pass at the advanced level, which is signed by the governor, that's one way that, um, to prove, basically, to any employer, as they're saying in an interview, that I do have personal care skills. Even though they've not ever worked in the field, they at least have proved their competency. So I would say yes. 
And let me just add one thing about the ANACTI exam, because relatively new within the past two years, depending on the college that the student is selecting to go to, they may earn one to four credits based on their score towards their college um, course. Okay, now comes the tough part as a facilitator. We do have a few more questions, but we are running up against the clock. So I'll take a couple that I can answer myself quickly because I know the program. Um, what grade, this is for seniors only. This is a senior only program. And if I can just add, I hope Don and Kristen you don't mind, but um, this really speaks for the students who are high achievers at their feeder schools and may not have considered career and technical education as an option for them, but this program is so college-based and rigorous that that's, it really attracts um, very high-flying students. Um, I hope you all take that in the spirit that I mean it, not in any derogatory way. Um, a question, who offers patient safety and, and um, HIPAA or HIPAA certifications? Uh, is there a quick answer to that, Don and Kristen? We can provide a website for you um, later, but it, it's the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. So if they would Google Institute for Healthcare Improvement or IHI, that it's a three-module course that the students can do right online, to earn, and it's free to earn okay. their certificate. And I'm going to keep moving real quickly. This is the last question I'm going to take for you at, for now. Um, do you have any statistics in terms of how many students go into a health-related field, such as nursing, uh, who actually get into nursing school and graduate school? Let me read that again. Do you have any statistics you can share in terms of how many students who pick a profession like nursing actually get in? We don't have um, direct numbers. Just this past year, because it was the 10th cohort and we wanted to give students time to get through medical school, the, our partners at Lehigh Valley Health Network did create a survey that they sent out to all of our alumni. Um, however, the response to that obviously was, was low, either because maybe they had an incorrect email. Um, so I don't have exact numbers and you know, we, Something that's one of the on. things we want to do is track these things better. I would love to present this one day at the High Schools That Work conference in the summer once we have all the data. Um, I'm going to thank you both. There is another question or two that we'll hold on to until the end so that we give our next presenter time. Uh, I do want to say this for our audience members. Um, this is an outstanding seniors only program. It offers the career and technical high school another enrollment option, if you will, for students who may not want to be there for three or four years. And Donna and Kristen, you, you cannot believe, I'm speaking to the audience, you cannot believe how much these two women do. Every student has their personal text and cell, or cell phone number. They are running this program so efficiently and effectively they could write a book on it. So please do reach out to them. We'll have their contact information at the end if you are considering a similar program. Thank you, ladies, so, so much. And I'm sorry I'm, I'm cutting you off. I know we could talk longer. But our next presenter is waiting. Her name is Alicia Kellett. And Alicia has an uh, equally great information to share with us. Um, Alicia received her Bachelor of Science degree in Exercise Science and Sports Medicine from Stetson University and is currently teaching in the Health Services Academy at Deltona High School. A strong advocate for leading by example, she involves herself in various leadership roles where she can impart her knowledge while also gaining new information to make herself and her classroom a better place. Alicia's professional interests are centered around the uh, CTE organiza organization HOSA, uh, Future Health Professionals, where she serves in various capacities at the regional, state, and national level. She is also a member of various nonprofit and service learning organizations such as Relay for Life, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the American Soci uh, Safety and Health Institute, and the Melanoma Research Foundation. Alicia's current focus includes involving students in projects and activities where they apply their skills in real-world situations and settings such as the health fair, fire department, ride-along program, and career shadowing. In addition, she serves as the CTE Health Science Program Assistant for Volusia, Volusia County Schools and is a member of the Career Connection Cadre and Health Science Advisory Board for VCS. She was honored as last year's Deltona High School Teacher of the Year based on her commitment to her students, dedication in the classroom, and contributions within the Deltona 
uh, community. I hope I said that correctly. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Uh, once again, Alicia Kellett from Deltona High School. And um, just to give you a little geographic location, Deltona is located strategically between um, Orlando and Daytona Beach. So if you're looking for landmarks, those are two popular landmarks. So we are right here in the Central Florida area. Um, coming from Deltona High School, um, let me just shout out to the fact that I myself am, a, am an alumni of Deltona High. Uh, I graduated in 1994 from Deltona High School. Uh, attended Stetson University in DeLand, Florida, which is about 15 minutes north of here. And as soon as I graduated from uh, college uh, with my degree, I came back here and started teaching here uh, at Deltona High. So I'm very uh, proud to say not only am I a product and student of Deltona High School, but that I returned to my alma mater um, to, to continue uh, my, my experience. Um, we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. Just to give you a little background information, um, Deltona High School, as well as all schools in Volusia County, um, we actually have 10 high schools in Volusia County. And of the 10 high schools in Volusia County, six of those high schools offer a health science program or academy. Uh, Deltona High School's Health Services Academy began during the 1996-97 school year. And um, that program started off uh, more or less with students that were interested in nursing. Um, as an academy, we actually have students that enter our program as early as ninth grade. Um, if they have an interest in pursuing a healthcare career post high school graduation, um, we encourage them to apply for our academy. Um, it is an application-based program. And so we have anywhere from 150 to 200 students each year that apply to enter into our academy program. And our academy can accept anywhere from 50 to 60 ninth graders. So you can see that we typically are able to accept about a quarter um, of the students uh, that actually apply to our program. Um, some of the things that we look for when students are applying, uh, we want to see that they have a strong interest in a future healthcare career. We also want to make sure that they have maintained acceptable discipline and attendance records, as we don't want to uh, have students with discipline or attendance concerns um, that would uh, you know, cause any kind of havoc or problems um, with us pulling them out for different career shadowing or guest speakers and things. Um, we also look at their standardized test scores as well as their current grades. And what we do is we look at all of this information um, from their seventh and eighth grade school year. So we get a good two-year picture of the student um, prior to them um, actually being accepted and or denied from our program. Once a student is accepted into our program, um, they are held to higher standards than what the traditional high school student would be held to. Um, our program um, enforces uh, acceptable attendance records, maintaining acceptable grades as far as core classes. We want their core classes to be uh, C's or better. Um, and we also want to make sure that they're maintaining acceptable um, academic marks in our academy classes. And when, I'm, when I keep saying the word academy, I want everyone to understand that the true definition of an academy-based program um, per the National Academy Standards is that not only do we have a specialized health science course that we offer, but our students literally travel from our health science classroom to their biology class together. And so they are taking biology honors as ninth graders. And the same students that sit in my first and second period ninth grade academy class are also sitting in the same um, biology class with our core biology course teacher um, at some point during the day as well. So these students literally do travel from course to course. Uh, we tie in a core course at each grade level. 
And um, we do have a few handouts that will be available to everyone. And you'll be able to see what those course pairings are that we offer at each grade level in our academy program. But we do start in ninth grade. We hope that those students that, stick, um, that apply to the academy in ninth grade um, do stick with us. And honestly, I can say that from year to year, we may lose one or two students. And typically, that is because they have changed their career interest. Um, they have chosen to pursue a career maybe in marketing or in agriculture. And um, once they're in our program, they are not held hostage. We want to give them the opportunities um, to explore other careers because we all know what it's like when they uh, get out into college and um, they're changing their major two and three times. So if they can make those decisions and, and change those career paths while they're in high school, um, we hope to be able to save them a little bit of time and uh, money as they pursue their education. Um, the uh, Health Academy at Deltona High, and based on those national uh, standards, um, we have an academy evaluation process here in our school district that looks at every single academy in our district, whether it's health science, agriculture, marketing, graphic design, um, culinary. And there are 12 national standards that our programs each year are evaluated by. And um, I'm proud to say that Deltona High School, in the last 10 years or so that we have been having these evaluations, we are a gold level academy, meaning we are one of the top performing academies in our district. And um, we actually are having our superintendent's gold academy tour. Uh, we are hosting them on December 2nd here at our school um, so that everyone in our superintendent's office as well as our school board members, business partners, and cadre members have the opportunity to come out and see with their own eyes um, exactly what a true academy program looks like. So just to give a, a quick little overview of that, we can go on to the next slide. One of the biggest things that we um, at Deltona High School are proponents of is making sure that our students um, become effective leaders and giving them the opportunities to um, share and, and not only share but also learn um, a little bit about themselves and how to become a leader. Um, we actually have a team of 13 students that make up our HOSA, Health Occupation Students of America, is what that acronym stands for. Um, 13 students that make up our officer team, as well as myself and my co-teacher, uh, Brandy Meadows, as the two HOSA advisors. We are a very large program with 184 students in our academy, and so we are a two-teacher program, so we are very fortunate for that. We like to take our students to a variety of different leadership and trainings throughout the school year. And as a matter of fact, Friday morning, uh, Brandy and I will be leaving with our officer team and heading to Gainesville for our state leadership conference that our uh, Florida HOSA officers put on. So we will be in Gainesville all weekend with about 500 students from across the state of Florida hoping to uh, impart some leadership knowledge and skills and improve some leadership knowledge and skills um, amongst our own um, students here at Deltona High. Next slide. Another very important component of a uh, health science program or any kind of uh, career and technical organization or career and technical um, education course um, is community service and getting involved, um, whether it is through your marketing courses, your graphic design courses, your health services. Of course, we are focusing health services here, um, but we like to get our students involved in organizations and programs that are healthcare oriented. So you see a variety of pictures on the screen. Um, in the upper left-hand corner is a charity walk um, through uh, multiple sclerosis that the students did earlier in the school year. Um, they were just volunteers. They helped hand out water bottles, and they were actually physical manpower um, setting up and tearing down that day. So they did not put a team in to participate. They were the manpower behind the scenes. Um, the upper right-hand corner is our pink fire truck. This was just two weeks ago at one of our um, local breast cancer walks, and they brought the pink fire truck out, and the students there in their royal blue medical scrubs our students from the Health Academy that were there and serving as assistants in the medical tent. So uh, in the, any individuals during the 5K that had any kind of basic medical issues, our students were there to be able to help hands-on. 
Bottom right hand corner is a picture of our actual principal on the far left who is very involved, um, as well as one of our business partners for the Big Red Bus. Uh, we have uh, blood, uh, uh, blood drives here at Deltona High School for a year. And um, the two students that you actually see there, one of them sitting down, um, he was the one that was checking students in that day and making sure that they had their proper IDs and they were receiving the proper paperwork to fill out the confidential information. And then in the very middle of the screen, you see where um, the Deltona High School marquee, uh, right with, as parents and students enter campus, uh, Two weeks ago, we had a health fair here at the school where we invited local businesses that are a part of our academy to join us in our school's gym, as well as some of our upper level students in the academy, juniors and seniors. And they created and set up individual booths um, of information um, that was specific uh, general health and healthcare type information. Um, we had everyone here from the local fire department to a sports and rehabilitation um, clinic. We had uh, one of our, uh, our hospice uh, partners that was here. Uh, we had One Blood, which is our blood drive organization. In addition to the businesses, we intermixed our student tables. So on that day, we had approximately 25 tables set up in our gymnasium. They all had the little fun giveaways and handouts. And this was open to our entire school, um, as well as any of the parents um, that were interested, um, that they were able to come out and be a part of and maneuver through the health fair that day. And we had approximately 2,500 um, students throughout the day that actually came through. And most of those students were actually, they had come through with one class and then came through later on in the day with another class. But we were very pleased with the turnout um, with the health fair. And this was our first time doing it. And this was uh, something that we definitely are going to continue to enact over the years. But you see the various different organizations that we work with there. That's just a sample little list of things. Um, but it does, it, it does make a very, very um, important, uh, it's a very important point to make that community service is the way we have to go. We have to make sure that um, our students understand the benefit of being a part of their community and getting involved in their community and doing something that they have a, a specific interest in themselves. Next slide. School-based involvement, you see once again, um, we have the big red bus there. Upper right-hand corner is our uh, homecoming week festivities carnival. Our students help set up and, um, and run some of the inflatables. So this is a fun thing for them to do. Um, bottom left-hand corner, this is actually a picture of our students going over to one of the local middle schools, one of our feeder middle school programs, and actually demonstrating CPR in the middle school physical education classes so that the students could not only, one, learn a skill that they might be able to utilize later on in life, but number two, it might spark an interest for a student that wants to apply to our academy at the end of their eighth grade year. Next slide. Job shadowing and partnerships, and I know that uh, we heard a little bit about that, but this is the, the nuts and bolts of our academy. Um, we have to have partnerships and career shadowing opportunities for our students. Um, as ninth and 10th graders, um, they do a lot of jobs, uh, they do a lot of guest speakers in the classrooms and a lot of volunteering out in the community. Once the students hit their 11th grade year of high school, during their 11th grade year and 12th grade year, it is mandatory that students actually have so many hours of career shadowing. Juniors are required to have 25 hours of career shadowing. Seniors are required to have 50 hours of career shadowing. And these are all documented through a, a packet that we have um, that business partners and students both um, fill out. But these are some examples of some pictures um, that we actually have from our health fair in our gymnasium, as well as one of our business partners um, that was uh, awarded one of the business partners of the year at our local career and technical um, education awards uh, at the beginning of the school year. Next slide. HOSA, every career and technical education program has a um, career and technical student organization, also known as a CTSO, that is directly tied to their program. And um, HOSA is the career and technical student organization that Deltona High School has chosen to affiliate with. Every single one of the students in our Health Services Academy are HOSA members. Um, HOSA is a co-curricular organization that promotes leadership uh, team building, 
uh, there are civic uh, duty, civic responsibilities, as well as competitive events. So we want to make sure that we are producing those individuals that truly um, want to be medical professionals, that they have a good, solid foundation. So when they graduate high school, they actually can, you know, acquire one of those. Uh, they actually have a little bit more interest and a little bit more knowledge as well as when they enter those post-secondary institutions, they're a little bit more prepared than the average student that may have just taken a general health class in high school. And um, just a, a few quick items. The students in our program, um, their junior year of high school, they actually take the industry certification exam for the CMAA, Certified Medical Administrative Assistant. And the last two years, we have had a 100% pass rate with our juniors on that. And that is a test that um, our local industry has identified as a needs area. And our seniors every year, um, for the last two years, have been taking the CPCT, Certified Patient Care Technician um, Industry Certification Exam. And last year, we had an 80% pass rate. So we're very pleased with our pass rate. Uh, a little plug here for Volusia County Schools in general and our career academies. Um, Volusia County is identified as a Ford Next Generation Learning Community. Um, we have partnered with the Ford Motor Company, um, yes, the car selling company, um, but part of the Ford mission is to um, really see the transformation in education and getting into schools and, and doing what they can. And so uh, we have a, a group here in our district office that actually attends all of their meetings. And Volusia County is pleased to say that we are one of their next generation learning communities. Uh, last but not least, I will say that um, when it comes to an academy, I can tell you it's countless hours. Uh, myself and my co-teacher we spend, I sometimes believe that we like to sleep here on campus, <laughs> but um, in the end, it's, it's the, you know, the, the light bulbs that are, that are uh, turning on, it's the relationships that we are making with our students because we do have them for four years, it's the accolades that the students are receiving when they're getting accepted into the colleges, it's the late nights and the early mornings at leadership conferences, yes, it's a lot of hard work. Um, but in the end, when you see those kids walk across that stage at graduation and you know that they were a part of your health science program for the past four years and they are planning to pursue a, a degree in a health science field somewhere, whether it be dentist, uh, nursing, sports medicine, whatever, um, and to see and hear what they gained while they were in high school and the basic information and knowledge that they gained while they were here, it makes it all worth it. And um, here in our specific academy at Deltona High School, it says a lot when one of our school board members actually has their son enrolled in our program. And um, that speaks a lot of volume to, to the dedication that myself and my co-teacher um, you know, commit to this uh, program, as well as our core teachers um, for our academy. And uh, we are proud to say that we have uh, many, uh, it's countless um, individuals that are out there in the community working in local hospitals and medical offices that have continued on their education and are current doctors and nurses and dentists out in the community. Thank you, Alicia. And again, I hate to be the taskmaster. I know these, um, I know you, this topic could be discussed for a long time and, and not run out of things. Thank you so much. I'm I'm going to do things a little bit out of order now, so just to okay. respect our time. Go ahead, Alicia. Yeah. You, oh, I thought you were telling me something. No. 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 Okay. Go for it. So you'll see the um, the presenter's contact information on the slide, and while you're looking at that, uh, remember that this will this will be recorded and available. You can you will receive a follow up email from us. And in the email, you will receive a couple of Alicia's handouts, um, but they are also apparently a new feature here on GoToWebinar. They are apparently also downloadable right now. Uh, you should see something that says handouts on your right-hand panel board, and apparently you can download those handouts now. Uh, but you also will receive them in a follow-up email tomorrow, along with uh, a questionnaire that we ask you to just briefly answer seven questions so we can always improve. We also have another webinar. Uh, we're taking December off. We have one coming out in January, so stay tuned for information on that. I'm going to just toss out a few questions for those of you who need to leave us. It is 1.45. We thank you very much for joining us. Uh, for those who want to stay on board, 
I'll ask our speakers if they can just give us two or three more minutes and give the most brief uh, response to a couple questions. Um, is that okay with our presenters? Yes. Okay, so Alicia, um, a question for you that I think your handout will address. Patricia mm -hmm. asked um, what classes, core and electives, would make up the Health Service Academy program. I believe that's in one of your handouts, am I right? Yes, you are absolutely correct. It is in the handouts, and actually on um, both of the documents, it kind of spells that out, what the four-year plan is. We like to tie in the core science classes um, at each grade level, as well as their junior and senior year, we like to also include the English classes, so to, making, to make sure that they're effective writers as well. Okay, and one other question for you, Alicia. Are you using federally, um, federally 21st century community learning funds to supplement academy program? Academy program. To be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what that entails. However, um, I can tell you that academies here in Volusia County um, are dictated through our Career and Technical Education Office, um, but there is no additional funding that we as specific academies receive um, to operate our academies other than when our students pass their industry certification exams, we do see a little kickback from federal money there. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And for Kristen and Donna, I believe I could answer this, but I'd like you to. Um, who instructs the community college, the L-Tri-C dual enrollment courses? Uh, that question was asked by Esther. I, I don't think she wants specific names, but is it um, who is it instructing those? And also the Penn State might as well say. Yeah, both of the college settings, they are taught by professors that are employed by those institutions. And then we are there just to, you know, kind of help the students. I, I sit in the classroom at L Tri C and uh, kind of um, make sure that if the students have any questions or if they're in need of extra tutoring or learning support, that we kind of help facilitate that. It's an eye-opener for students taking a college course because they're used to getting A's in high school and not really studying and that's what they all tell us. And then when they enter that course it's like hitting a brick wall. So we work with the professors closely. Um, they let us know if there's students that are really struggling so we can address some situations before the end of the semester because we want them to all be successful when they pass the course. And I, too, sat in one of their classes once at Penn State with your students. And even I had trouble staying focused um, for, I think it was a three-hour class, but it was, you know, all, it, it's a very different instructional approach, uh, delivery approach. And, yes, it's, it's very, uh, I know the, the kids that I have talked to that have gone through your program, um, as well as my kids' friends, have said it really helped prepare them. Like you said, it's an eye-opener for what it takes to sit in a college class where the teacher isn't spoon-feeding you and isn't as concerned with, are you getting this? Are you paying attention? They're, they're putting it out there. Whether you take it is up to you. So I, I agree, it's a great precursor to college. And uh, for both presenters, um, how many different job shadowing experiences do students participate in? I know for the EHP program, that's a senior only program, and they start shadowing in November, so we need two months to get them acclimated to shadowing before they're ready to go out. So they shadow for about four or five months, and they get between 70 and 80 hours of shadowing time in. We have them keep a log, which we sign at the end of the school year so we can validate that they did complete those hours especially for students going into PA programs, the physician assistant studies, because they do have to have documentation of shadowing, volunteering, and working hours. Thank you. And Felicia, do you, do you have an idea of how many job shadows? Yeah. Um, as, as far as our program is concerned, the requirement for our students at the junior level is 25 hours. Um, and they typically start that around the January to May time frame. And then our senior class, they are required to have 50 hours. Um, one thing that I can definitely say about the students, and I'm sure that students across the country um, in special programs like this uh, can, can follow me and, and say, yes, that's our kids, is that many times 
our kids reach a far above and beyond um, the minimum hours because once they get into that setting and they realize what they're going to see and experience, um, they they tend to run with it. So many of times our juniors end up with 50 hours and some of our seniors end up with 100, 150 hours. Wow. All right. Well, there are a few more questions and I would ask that those uh, people please direct your questions directly to the presenters at their emails and or reach out to us and we will provide you with that. I want to give a huge Thank you. I know, personally know, how difficult it was for all three of you to make the time not only to come and join us at this time, but to send us PowerPoint slides and to prepare for today. Probably not what you needed to add to your plate during this busy time of year. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, this is a great way to get the word out of the wonderful things career and technical education is doing and the wonderful things our students are doing in this day and age where we have a lot of bad news about students. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our participants. Thank you, Candice, for helping me. Everyone have a great week and a great Thanksgiving, and we hope to hear you back here um, in January for our next webinar. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.